Hey there, it's Jenny Clark with Solvability, and we've got another Freedom Friday, and this is one of my favorite people to talk to, David Mathis. I met David in Huntsville many years ago when he was working at Service First. Service First specialized in working with federal contractors because in Huntsville, most everybody there is a federal contractor. So we've had a lot of discussions, and when he said, Jenny, I'm going to go work for a government contractor myself, Martin Federal, I was like, yeah, that's great, David. You're going to see how the other side lives. So, David, what I'd love to have you do is just tell a little bit about yourself yeah. and what Martin Federal does. And then we're going to just have some chats about what your banking experience brought to Martin Federal and the challenges in federal contracting. So take it away, David. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. It, uh, it's it's, it's uh, fun to be here. Uh, I can't see everybody that's on the call, but uh, I'll try not to embarrass me or you today. Uh, we have known each other a long, long time. Uh, I think my kids were uh, in, uh, in in elementary school, and now I have married kids. And so, I, as I said earlier, I, you know, my kids keep getting older, and I stay the same age. I'm not sure how that's possible, but but I've but I'll claim to have done that. Um, yeah, I was in banking for 25 years, and uh, the majority of that time was banking GovCon. Uh, customers, uh, both in the Huntsville area, the Tampa area, uh, you know, the Orlando area, and in D.C. And so we we really uh, specialized in that that uh, uh, community. And part of what I think made us successful in that community is that we we understood or we worked to understand the perspective of the government contracting owner uh, and the CFOs within the GovCon community. Uh, when I decided to uh, uh, leave Service First and uh, uh, join uh, Martin Federal in 2017, um, it was really like going through two years of Spanish class and then being dropped in the middle of Mexico with no support. Um, so it's, uh, you, I knew enough to be dangerous, but I, I really had no expectation um, or no understanding for how complex uh, the government community really is. Well, I think that's very interesting because when you go from one role to the other, you are dropped in and you've got to learn how to sink or swim really fast. And it's funny to think that you had 25 years banking federal contractors, but when you went on the other side, it was it was something you really had to adapt to. And that's something we've definitely emphasized when we talk in our GovCon community because so many people in it are veterans. And um, veterans have this great language and everything. We're always talking to them about how to translate military into management because it's just like a different language and we've got to be able to speak it effectively or else it's kind of like, remember that Charlie Brown, whenever they, the teacher's talking, she's always going wah, wah, wah. And people can't understand if you can't speak the lingo, speak the language. Right. So tell us a little bit about Martin Federal and what you guys do. So Martin Federal was started by Corey Martin. He's our founder and CEO uh, in 2006. Uh, started really in the information assurance side uh, at Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, Corey was uh, uh, headquartered in Auburn, Alabama. Um, I was actually his banker uh, for quite a long time. Uh, he moved his office to Huntsville and began growing into the NASA community. Um, so you know, after 14 years, uh, we're really focused on today. You know, engineering. Uh, technical services, um, you know, training and development and cybersecurity and IT. Um, so the, you know, the, those swim lanes, uh, we've really tried not to be all things to all people, but really had, uh, had to establish swim lanes so we could focus on those particular areas. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, growth is our, you know, our main objective, uh, but it's not just revenue growth, it's employee growth and development. Uh, it's growth with our relationships with our customers and growth with how we uh, contribute to our communities that we work in. Well, I think you make a really good point about everybody as they start out as a federal contractor, almost it starts out with a we can do anything. Right. And just saying information assurance or IT is super, super broad. Right. But inside the government contracting market, you've got to go after where the agency is spending the money, where, what can I access? Where right. do I want to travel? What kind of work do I want to go after? And there's some really important decisions about it. One of the things we were talking about a few minutes ago was just the whole idea of Martin Federal has a culture around it of taking care of employees and families. Because you said as a banker, 
that payroll was just a number, but it feels different now, right? It sure does. Yeah, the the knowing the uh, the names of the of those that are behind us make a big difference, and there's a weight that's with that. But it's also a, it's also a rewarding way to know that uh, uh, those that are contributing to the success of the company are, are also benefiting from the success of the company through their own self-development uh, and their own growth and personal growth. Uh, and then the closer they get to the customer um, and then they are motivated to grow within the company, then that relationship with the customer grows. And so, yeah, it's uh, I used to, you know, just when we would talk payroll, it was a number. And it was just make sure payroll goes through, make sure the numbers go through. Um, but now um, knowing, you know, our customers, excuse me, knowing our employees and, and, you know, their families and where they live and work, uh, there's, a, there's a pressure, but it's also, a, you know, it's, there's meaning to it, too, that's really important to us. Well, one of the things you also mentioned is how you, especially during these changes of COVID, you really took a look at how to engage um, right. your employees and created, do you call them employee resource groups? Yeah, and ERGs, we sure did. Um, we uh, hired an employee engagement specialist, Eric Francois. Uh, Eric came on uh, I, probably six months. Eric, if you're listening, I apologize. I've lost track of time. I'm old enough now that I can claim that, that uh, that's a mental issue. Uh, for me, but I, he's been with us six months, maybe eight months, uh, and and through the uh, COVID, you know, we already had employees in in uh, eight states. We've got employees in Afghanistan and Kuwait, and so engaging with remote workers already was a challenge. But then you throw COVID on top of that, and you have now your corporate office is remote, and other areas are remote, and so trying to put uh, employee resource groups together to to bring those employees that have common interests together, like veterans. Uh, was one of the things that we tried to add value uh, to our employees and engage with them a little more. It's a tough. It's tough to engage with folks that are remote, uh, but it's even tougher to engage uh, with those folks that um, don't know that you believe um, that their best interest is at heart. For, you know, from you. Well, I think what you're talking about is how you as a corporation is reach out to your employees and make them feel like you care about them and um, creating ways that they can feel like they're part of the community because there's so many things that are unique about federal contracting. First of all, that once you start up, you can grow really fast if you know what you're doing and have the right resources behind you. The second is that it's most federal contractors, if you're all in, are gonna be working overseas as well, different time zones, a right. lot of different pay differentials and a lot of different rules. The other thing is, you're recruiting a different type of employee. And so many of the companies that I'm working with employ veterans with clearances. And you've got to have a way to keep that pipeline open. And how do you reach out to them? Because right. just to bid, you've got to have those resumes together and everything. So let me ask you a couple of questions. You've seen a lot of changes in the Huntsville community. And I think the biggest latest win is space. Right. Tell us a little bit about Space Force and how excited everybody is. I think that everybody in Huntsville is excited about just uh, overall growth and diversification of the government community that's here, right? I mean, a, a lot of people, when they hear Huntsville, they think NASA. Uh, NASA has a huge community here in Huntsville, but what they don't understand is that the Army also has a presence here. The FBI has a presence here. Uh, ATF has a presence here. Uh, and so bringing uh, the Space Force or Space Command uh, to Huntsville is a continuing diversification. If, you know, diversification is still federal contracting and federal federal dollars, but uh, more diversification for Huntsville, uh, and that's bringing more uh, high-paid jobs, more engineers, uh, and and then too, you know, and I'm a networking person. I, I think that it's super important uh, for us to know uh, people in different communities and different uh, experiences. And uh, as we grow as a company, it's, no, it's nice to know that there's people that have other experiences or are connected to other areas um, that can contribute to the success of the company as we, as we go out. And you mentioned recruiting uh, earlier. So uh, that move to Huntsville is, uh, is going to be uh, super important, I think, to the community, but also to the other contractors that are in town. Well, that really kind of talks about why I've been working on what I call GovCon Summit, which is a virtual accelerator network, mainly for entrepreneurs in federal contracting that hire veterans with clearances. And a lot of those are in professional services and IT. 
that's a unique group of people, but they're also geographically dispersed. What they do is critical to our nation, our national security. So when I think of GovCon, I think of it as the mall. And there are the ones of us that have written the book, Becoming a GovCon Expert, we're the specialty stores. I've got some anchor stores in there. We've got Bassberry Sims as a law firm, GovCon Pay. This is a payroll H human capital company that specializes in federal contracting. So you get your questions answered. I got a benefit guy named Mike DeVoe out of Jacksonville with Keystone Benefits. I've got um, a public spend forum, which is really creating a marketplace between the, the small business suppliers and the government um, by using some really cool um, AI technology. And then I also have uh, Deepwater Spend, Deepwater Point, which are some um, senior executive and senior military really talking about what are the trends because for small businesses to grow in this super competitive environment, they need to be able to grab on with other people and follow other market leaders. And Martin Federal is one of that because you're on the Inc. 5000 once again. What's the trick with the Inc. 5000? How come there's 23 companies in Huntsville on the Inc. 5000 that are federal contractors? Have you got it figured out? I don't think uh, necessarily figuring out how to get on the Inc. 5000 other than filling out the application properly is important, but I think it's growth. Uh, and I think that, um, you, you know, you see a lot of companies that are in, in Huntsville that had uh, people with certain experiences that were, um, or ex expertise that were in large businesses um, that left, and because Huntsville is so entrepreneurial and, and supportive of the entrepreneur, you see a lot of smaller companies starting up. Uh, they gain contract and they, they gain uh, customer uh, intimacy and they begin to grow. And so you just see a, 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 a faster um, growth uh, for a company. If you're going to uh, get into uh, retail, for example, um, that growth is, is only limited to how many people you can sell your product to, and you might not see this fast of a growth, you know, 10% growth, 12% growth. In government contracting, if you have customer intimacy and you're delivering expertise to the customer, um, you might see, you know, 200% growth overnight. Um, and so I think that the government community, uh, the GovCon community is accustomed to seeing hyper growth. Uh, but there are some pitfalls that are associated with managing that hyper growth uh, in that. But I, I think that that's, you know, and Huntsville is a, is a unique town. It's not a uh, very closed community. It's very open. I think you remember that and the work that you've done here. I think that the banks, uh, the law firms, the accounting firms, the insurance agents all know, know the industry and know how to support that. And then, you know, we're, we're competitive mates too. So you might work with somebody uh, on, a, on a proposal uh, that you might compete with on another proposal, but it's very open how we uh, help support uh, one another as businesses from not only information uh, and advice, but also uh, networking uh, to find other opportunities to work together. Well, what you're really talking about is an ecosystem that has right. all the different pieces of it. And what we're creating with GovCon Summit is a virtual ecosystem that does something very similar. One right. of the things we were talking about before we started was that it's so important for a, a, an executive at a government contractor to be able to talk to other executives and say, how did you deal with this? What were your choices? When you went through this growth spurt, what did you do? Because you're absolutely right. When a company that's a federal contractor has success, they can boom overnight and they can't afford to put all the infrastructure in until that happens. But when they do, it's like, oh my gosh, we won this contract. We, we won this contract. What are we going to do? And I feel like that's one of the strengths of the Huntsville community that people have always relied on because the interaction between the Chamber of Commerce and the, um, the Catalyst and the uh, UAH PTAC and HASBAT and all of the different organizations to support it, you can always pick up the phone or make a call and say, David, who would I ask about this? Right. That's why I want to spread this with what we're doing with GovCon Summit because it just breaks my heart when I see a company that isn't really getting where they need to be. They don't need to talk to me. They need to talk to somebody else who's been there and done that and maybe three right. or four of them to find the path because that's so important. The other thing I'd love to talk to you about is Based on your experience as a banker and everything else, I think most small businesses in federal contracting 
don't recognize that when they call up the bank and say, hey, I'm a new business. I started six months ago. I just hired 10 guys. I want a federal contract. Can you give me $600,000 on a line of credit that that might not work with your general banker, right? Yeah, I think that I was going to say that when you said a minute ago, in this community, we're accustomed to somebody saying, I had 10 people yesterday and I just want a contract. I'm going to have 110 uh, in 30 days. And the community here and, you know, Service First, when, when, when I was there and still uh, working with those guys, um, they are accustomed to hearing that over and over. They've had repetition of hearing that over and over and have solutions to try to figure out um, how to solve those problems from a cash flow standpoint. Um, also, too, I think it's important, um, especially for the smaller businesses that are just getting going, to build those relationships early. It's, it's really difficult to knock on the door and say, hey, I just want a contract. Oh, and by the way, let me introduce myself to you, right? I think you have to begin building those relationships and building the foundation early, not only um, internally with your own staff, but also with those people that are going to support you, you know, like the bank, like the accounting firms. You know, the accounting firms have got to understand cost segregation and government contracting as well. And so, you know, you might have been doing your personal taxes with somebody here and you want to continue to use them, but they don't understand the pitfalls of DCAA and cost segregation. And so building that foundation early is super important. And most people that are accustomed to dealing with government contractors know that while I might be $100,000 a year in revenue today, I could grow. And so there's incentive for those people to be with you early and begin building that relationship with you early. Because once you grow, now everybody's calling that customer, right? Or calling that company and, and you want them to have loyalty to you. And so a lot of the accounting firms, the insurance agencies, the law firms and the banks all want to begin building those relationships as early as possible. And they understand that. So you get a little different feel uh, when you go in and, and the senior level of the people that you're talking to um, when you're uh, when you're small. Well, it makes such a big difference because you need to have a unique group around you. And I've heard it described as your inside children or your outside children. <laughs> so I don't know if you know Edward Sp Spensley with Bank of America, mm -hmm. Merrill Lynch, yeah. but he's just been a great mentor to me in so many ways. And that's how he described it is the inside children are the people that are your employee family that you know and everything else. But you've got outside children that eat at your house all the time as well. And that you go over and, you know, hang out with because you've got to develop those relationships early. You right. can't just call up and say, here I am, because you don't have the credentials. Also, you have a whole bunch of other stuff that explodes when you have a growth like that. And you can't, What you need to be able to text somebody and say, it happened. It right. happened, we're in. Um, and to me, I think the other thing is, I've, I've been doing a lot on Match.com. And I'm learning the game of online dating. And that is so much like federal contracting. Because you got to be nice to everybody right now. You, you need to be nice to all the bankers. You need to know all the accountants. You need to know the insurance agents. You also need to know people that you might team with, that you might compete with. You need to know who's working with this agency because maybe you're in with NASA, but you just figured out that Army is humongous in, in, um, in Huntsville and how do you get in? You don't, it's like, just like the other thing is I can't just pick up the phone and go on a date with somebody I've got to hang out where they hang out. I got to talk about what they want to talk to. I also have to decide what I really want. And that is so important in federal contracting because some people just want to get to about 20 employees, stay steady there. And when they get done, they'll retire or sell out to their employees. Others really say, well, you know, when I get to a certain point, I'm going to sell out to Lockheed Martin. All of those things are doable, but you've got to have a game plan and a path. That's why we're calling our event Mastering the Game of GovCon, because I know that we could we could make a list like that of right. the companies we've seen blow up. Nichols Research, Quality Research, um, Torch Technology is a big one. You know, all of these companies that pretty much got together and said, I get this and here's what we're going to do. I see so many spinoffs. Can you think of some that... Um, they, they really had big, big impact. Like Dynetics was just bought out by SAIC, right? Uh, no, Lidos. Lidos, okay. Yeah, they sure were. We've had a lot of acquisitions here in Huntsville. And I think what that's going to do is you're going to see a lot of very technical groups 
um, that say, hey, we could do this on our own. You know, they maybe had loyalty to, and this note, you know, I'm not uh, bad mouthing acquisitions. I love acquisitions, and you know, and I, I think that that's a great exit plan for some companies. But you have core people that may have been there to start that business, or may have been there to start a, a, a technical group, and then they get bought out, and things change, and they're not as connected to the leadership, and so they say, hey, I think I could go do this on our own, right? And so they go out and do that. But uh, you said something a minute ago. I want to go back if if I can. And, and that's introducing yourself early to um, to the you know the support the outside children I guess um, that you did and if you if you don't know the cell phone number like you, you said a minute ago hey hey it happened we we did it if you don't know the cell phone of your banker if you don't know the cell phone of your accountant if you don't know the cell phone of the people that are supporting you and you can't text them while they're eating pancakes in the morning. I think that it's uh, it, it, you need to go search out for those relationships. So if it's 1-800-BIG-WHATEVER, I think that you need to find that, that connectivity to people that not only can help you with their expertise, but they can also network you uh, with other people that are being successful as well. Uh, and, and, you know, and the, you talk about people spinning out in all these other companies. Those people need to network with you as well because they may be really focused in on cybersecurity, but they don't understand cloud. Well, then now you're beginning to build a network that this the company A has cybersecurity, company B has cloud, and they can join together to offer that modernized cybersecurity package to the government customer. Well, you're so right. It's a relationship business, isn't it? It is. Um, you've got to know um, who you want to work with, who you want to avoid working with. You also want to say, um, what markets do I want to grow? Because the, the trick in federal contracting is, you know, first starting out by getting good at subcontracting, so you got some recurring revenue. The next thing you've got to figure out is, do we want to prime contract or do we never want to prime contract? And people find that prime contracting is the big hurdle they need to get over, but it's a huge investment, so much more investment than it used to be. And David, I think back to how much we used to spend on bid and proposal and business development activities. I would say that it went from 3% to about 20% of revenue. And right. it's because it's gotten so much more competitive. Right. Um, and there's so much more protests and legal expense with it. What do you think is the number one challenge that um, small businesses face at the 10 to 100 employee size that really they're challenged with these days? Can you think of one? Opportunity costs. And, and I, I'll, I mean, I, that's all caps. Um, working on something, saying yes to one thing is saying no to something else. Um, if, if you don't have customer intimacy, and uh, Matthew Schmitz is our chief growth officer here, he said, if you're not left on the cash, the customer, the more you have uh, connectivity to the customer, um, then you're the high higher P win you have. Uh, it, it, but I think that if if you go and say, "Hey, we're going to bid everything," um, and or we're going to uh, we're going to pursue certain work that we might not have uh, intimacy on, or we say, "Hey, this is real high value, and we're going to spend our time here," you're still saying no to other things. And so it's real clarity around who do you want to be, where do you have the relationships with a customer, because it is a relationship business, even though uh, the customer tries to, to make the, the procurement contracting officers and the technical people, but there are people that So David's frozen for a minute, but I think he'll come right back. No, those and, customers. So I just think yeah. that it's super. Yep, there you are. Okay. So, um, you know, David, you've given us a lot of great information today, and um, I really appreciate what you're talking about. And I, I liked what you said about, you know, your opportunity really being ruthless about that because you're giving up one for another. And if a company doesn't have clarity around what they're going after, they waste a lot of time and energy. So that's why we've, um, we're so excited about GovCon Summit with people um, are looking to be a part of this community and really understand how it all works. They can just go register at solvability.com slash GovCon Summit. So David, thanks so much. How can people reach you if they want to follow up with you? More than more than happy to have folks uh, email me 
That's D. Mathis at uh, martinfed.com. Mathis at martinfed.com. Yeah. So D. Mathis at martinfed.com, in case you didn't hear that. So thanks so much, everybody, for being on today.